says was no fluke. Can he add Olympic to world? And my goodness, he couldn't try much harder. Good rhythm to the last set of gates. 45, 46, 47, 48, 5, 4, 6 hundredths of a second by 6 hundredths. Tomba, double gold. The biggest favorite does it. Tomba gets his second gold. Giant slalom champion, slalom champion. He can't believe it. The fans never doubted it. Frank Berndl, the world champion, takes the silver medal and a fairy story for Paul Frommer of Liechtenstein, who until now, in all his long career, had never won an Olympic medal, gets the bronze like his brother Willie did in this same event back in Innsbruck in 76. Tomba, gold, Berndl, silver, Frommer, bronze. What a climax to the Alpine events here at Nikiska. So what a triumph for the Italians. Alberto Tomba's two gold medals, the first for their men's alpine team, since Piero Gross won this event at Innsbruck 12 years ago. And what a pity that great Swede, Ingemar Stenmark, couldn't end his Olympic career with a fourth medal. Still, that sensational second run by him is one that few here on the mountain will forget in a hurry. OK, coming up next, the four-man bobsled, so don't go away. you stop for petrol, make it mobile, because mobile unleaded petrols contain an advanced formulation called positive power to drive your engine clean. After running on mobile petrol, this clogged fuel injector came clean, giving smoother running and better fuel economy. Only mobile unleaded petrols have positive power to drive your engine clean. On each American Express card is one word that makes every other card seem like just a piece of plastic. Member. Our card members are entitled to a world of privileges. My wallet, my card, the lot's gone. I've got to be in Kalgoorlie tomorrow. Mr. Carter, I can have a new card for you by tomorrow. Great. It's only just out of warranty. Thank you. 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 Thank there are times when you need to feel comfortable and assured of your protection. That's why I choose Sure and Natural. Even on heavy days, Sure and Natural Maxi Shields give you thick pad protection with ultra thin comfort because their unique dispersion layer protects you more efficiently than conventional pads. For protection and comfort when you need it most, try Sure and Natural. On Monday, live from Hollywood, John Michael House in the hottest tongue in Tinseltown with news of his exclusive interviews with Barbara Streisand. Steven Spielberg and the legendary Betty Davis. Well, okay, back here at the four man bob competition, this very big crowd getting right behind every sled as it comes down the mountain. The battle still between the East Germans and the Russians. The Australians have a chance to bump themselves up a couple of positions. Let's go back to the action. The first sled down on this second run, that of Yanis Kippors of the Soviet Union, who's in joint fourth place. And this is the crew that set the new track record start of 5.18 seconds, the 50 meter push on their first run. Yes. 
Now they almost picked it up and threw it down the run on the first descent. And again, it's already quick. Now they run for about 50 feet. Clock starts. And on board, on board nicely. 5.19. And you can see how much smoother and quicker it was as those four Soviet bobbers got on board. Some of the sleds have still had the crews trying to get sat down as they've gone into the first bend. So it's only a hundredth of a second slower than the track record that he set on his first descent. Now, it's about 150 yards short of the mile, top to bottom. And top speeds down this accelerating straight were around the mid-70s, 74.8 miles an hour. Although we started early in the morning here to try and protect the track and stop it from deteriorating too much in the heat, there is quite a chill wind blowing this morning. No need for the sunshades out at the moment, 57.28. Well, that's uh, about half a second slower than his first run. We'll have to see how that compares with the others that will come later. 1 minute 54 for Kippors, the gold medalist in the two men. Egerhard Fasser in Switzerland won in seventh place. Meyer, Marcel Fasler and Werner Stocker. By his crew, they got away in 5.23 on the first start, so they're better than that. Hundreds of a second better and second best on this second run so far. second off the leaders on the first run 26.44 still second best this is a man who could well move up and challenge for one of the medals 74.9 just under 75 miles an hour former european and world four-man champion back in 1983 and a bronze medalist in the four-man world championships in st moritz last year 5717 would be the target time, 5737. And the total time of 1 minute 54.2 puts Fasser into second place. Well, let's hope the three crewmen don't start pushing this sled before Adrian de Piazza has got his grip on the push handle. No gloves, bare knuckles. This 25 year old ice hockey player with the Macquarie Bears. 5.54 was their first start, 5.56. And that's 12th quickest on this second run so far. Dodd's the youngster in this sled. He's only 19, student at Macquarie University. And Stephen Craig, the brakeman at the back, is only a year older, he's 20. A bank teller from Sydney lists his pastimes of some surfing. Three, six, five, seven, 11 quickest. Well, their first time was a 58.20. Time on the left would be their target time for the lead. They come down in 58.87. One minute 57.07, 11th place. And again, about half a second slower than his first run. Well, there's a terrific buzz of anticipation down this Bob run with Chris Laurie in Canada One, in bronze medal place after his first run. Now, this is the acid test. He was second sled down on the first run, had almost perfect conditions. What can he do now that the track has begun to break up a little bit? 5.23 was his first start, 5.28, and his ninth best. But these Canadian crews have obviously trained here for several weeks, indeed weeks and months prior to the Olympic event. They've seen more of this track than anyone else and should know it better than anyone else. Andy Swim. Ken LeBlanc and Howard Dell. 
three crew and then he's in eighth place here 26.63 25-year-old Chris Laurie comes from Windsor in Ontario, wasn't chosen to ride in the two men. And only nine quickest on this second run, but remember he was in third place, so he's got a little bit of time to play with. 58.05, so he's lost ground. One minute, 54.71, he's back to fifth. And with the hopping of East Germany and Hildebrand of Switzerland to come down immediately after him, will be pushed back at least a couple more places from there. Silver medalist in the two-man, defending Olympic champion from four years ago in the four-man. Wolfgang Hoppy in first place after his first run, and with an advantage of about a quarter of a second over Hildebrand of Switzerland, who was in second place. Now, that's a better start than their first, 5.24. It was a 5.26 on the first run. But the aerodynamic advantage of these sleds and the skill of the drivers certainly showed itself on that first run. Drivers aren't thinking about the bend that they're on, they're thinking a bend ahead, trying to remember what comes next. Only fifth fastest on this second run, but remember he's not had such a good draw. 35.62, he's improved to second, this will confirm him in first place. Slips through the labyrinth, then around bend 12, right-handed off 13, and the long finishing sweep. 5784 is the target time for the lead. Yes, he's well inside that. Half a second inside it. 57. Well, they took it off the screen so quickly I couldn't read it, but it's a total time of 1 minute 53.47. His finishing time 57.31. So Hoppy in first place. Now Hildebrand, 43. A tubby little electrician from Zurich. World, world two man champion way back in 77. 5.25, they equal their first start, but the push handles are a little slow to go down. This is exactly the same crew with Hildebrand that won the four-man world championship at St. Moritz last year. Bellman, Fassbind, and the great man Andre Kaiser. Only 12th quickest, 26.65. Well, Hildebrand could drop a few places unless he picks up some speed here. 74.3. The 21 medals awarded in Olympic Bob over the last few years. 12 of them have gone to East Germany. Five to Switzerland. And he stops the clock in 57.91. It's not good enough by Hildebrand. He's lost ground and slipped from second to fourth. So at the halfway stage of the Olympic four-man event, it's the two men who took gold and silver in the two men who occupy the top two places, but this time in reverse order. East Germany's Wolfgang Hoppe leading over half a second ahead of Yanis Kippos of the Soviet Union in second place, who in turn is two-tenths of a second ahead of Egerhard Fasser in Switzerland one. Well, that concludes the two four-man Bob runs today, and I think organisers made a pretty good move starting this competition earlier. Adrian, do you, would you agree with that? Yeah, the 8 o'clock start has uh, definitely ensured that the ice is going to be a more constant temperature throughout the, the two heats for today, and uh, that's fairer for everybody. There's still a bit of an advantage to the first four or five sleds off. They've got clean ice, it's not rough, but overall it gives everybody a fairer opportunity. But again, you didn't get any luck with the draw. No, we uh, drew 25 out of 26 sleds, so we were second last sled off today, which didn't help our cause. But uh, tomorrow the order's reversed. We're second sled off tomorrow morning, so hopefully we'll pull back a few places with that run. OK, sitting about 22nd, we think, today. Yeah, 22, 23. Uh, there's still a few sleds to come, but we're pretty happy with our result. If we can finish maybe 20, 21, maybe even crack an 18, we'll be very happy. Good effort from our boys, and of course the final two runs of this four-man Bob competition on tomorrow. Well, in a few moments, Mike, Chris and Jane will have made it back to our Olympic studio. We hope you're enjoying our coverage of the 15th Olympic Games here in Calgary, right on Nines Y Willow Sports.
this world famous beer. It's the home of Posse Rules. It's the home of the great Melbourne Cup, the greatest musos you'll ever hear. It's the home of Posse's who give it a go. Of restaurants the whole world knows. The home of fashion, a vibrant place, a fantastic place to go. Melbourne, Victoria. See these fantastic things. Nowhere else in Australia has such mountains of fun. Call Victor now to book your fantastic Victorian skiing holiday. Come on to the magic snowfields of Victoria. Break down the wall. If you didn't get the grades you wanted in school and feel bricked in about your future, the Control Data Institute can help you now. I took a control data course straight after leaving school. And now, I'm working for a leading car manufacturer. I graduated from control data in six months. Then they helped me find a career in finance. Now I'm really going places. The Control Data Institute. We help break down the walls for you. Ring now. Your computer career starts right here. For the first time in over three months, Crest is back with a genuine 40% off Tolado vertical blind. Fantastic. The latest designer fabrics. Fully woven polyester that won't curl or twist. Now a genuine 40% off. Take a deco at Crest's Tolato range of decorator colours. 16 exclusive fashion choices. Every one a genuine 40% off. So don't wait another three months. Call Crest today. If you want to clean your teeth 51% better than the leading premium toothbrush, you can either get a flip-top head or get a Reach toothbrush. Reach has an angled neck to get right into the back teeth. So either get a flip-top head or get Reach. There's only one special light that's brewed like a beer that tastes like a beer. Swan special light. Knock down as many as you like. I can be world champion. Tuesday night, meet the first of Michael Willis's Australians. He's good. Les Darcy, one of the world's great fighters. We need Les Darcy to enlist. One more Paulich carrying one more gun. Les Darcy came to his peak during the First World War. Some thought he should have been a soldier. I'm not a shirker. Not a boxer. And I'm not a quitter. Peter Phelps is Les Darcy the fighter. He's in hospital. 8.30 Tuesday, Michael Willis's Australians on 9. Welcome back, and from the uh, Saddle Dome, we've simply skated across the car park to our studios here in the International Broadcast Centre. We're not in bad shape, are we? No. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Chris is saying. <laughs> now, uh, it's hard to get over what happened tonight, and we'll certainly talk about that in a moment. But uh, first up, let's have a look, Jane and Chris, at the, uh, the great skating we've seen at the Games. It began with uh, the win in the pairs to a little Ekaterina Godeva and Sergei Grinkov. And uh, I suppose... Uh, in terms of sheer excellence, they were probably uh, the, clear, the most clear-cut winners of the Games. Yes, I would say so. They, they came out and they showed real confidence and skated beautifully throughout the championships. Um, the rest of the pairs was a bit of a, a falling over competition and, and these <laughs> were the, the couple that really went out and, and showed everybody how it was done. You wonder with the body as tiny as that at the age of 16, although she's got a 16-year-old face on top of it. Uh, you talked earlier tonight about the way some girls progress as they grow up. What will happen to that little girl, whether she'll stay that tiny? Yes, um, I have a feeling she will sort of take, stay fairly small. Um, she, she'll probably grow a few inches taller, but um, she looks like she's going to have long legs, and that's always a help. <laughs> well, she's... Uh, 16, he's 21, and I guess it's just a matter of them staying as long as they want to in the sport and uh, reeling in the gold medals, because there's really nobody that can even approach them. No, they, I think they're going to be dominating it for the next two, three, and possibly through to the next Olympics again. Um, and all the Russians back up behind them, 
will um, will be up there with the medalists as well, I think. They've had a great uh, games, the Russians, and they, in the sports they've won, in many of them they've been so dominant. I mean, the hockey team was just uh, daylight second. Uh, the same with the pairs, and uh, I guess, too, the same with the ice dancing. Yeah, they were... Possibly a lot of people said we could have posted the vote before the, the event started, but they have been the most consistent over the last four years. I mean, they've been there, they, they've won all the world championships. Um, they have so much confidence with their skating. And, and if Godeva and Grinkoff are the, uh, the new blood in Russian skating, I guess at these Winter Olympics, we are watching Natalia and Andre for the last time. Yes, um, I think they'll, they'll obviously do the World Championships in two weeks' time in Budapest. And there again, I don't think it will be a problem for them to get the gold medal. Um, but this is definitely their last season. And uh, hopefully it's not the last time we'll see them performing together there. They were so uh, great when I watched them tour with you in Australia a few years back. Is there any sort of movement in Russia for people to ever turn pro, or is that impossible? It's just beyond the system. It is possible now. There, there are several um, outlets for them to continue performing. Her husband, who is Igor Bobrin, who was a former men's single skater, has a, a company of skaters of his own. And indeed, their trainer, Tatiana Tarasova, also has a company of her own, so they can still continue to perform, but I think what will be interesting for them is to perform in the West and, and earn some dollars. And of course this event, uh, strangely enough, uh, was probably the most controversial uh, of the skating and uh, one of the most controversial of the games when uh, your charges, the Duchenne's, uh, won the hearts of the crowd, but uh, not the judges, and uh, I guess you've spoken to them quite a bit in the last few days. Yeah, we've given them a lot of reassurance about what really happened, what their performance was like, and they, they did skate really well. Um, and I think what came out of it was the general opinion of the powers that be, that they need to sit down and talk about their marking and what is considered ice dancing and where they want the direction of the sport to go. Well, it was the only uh, ice skating event where the, uh, the crowd's choice didn't do well. I mean, we saw tonight the crowd uh, went crazy over little Midori Ito and Liz Manley, and uh, rightfully so, they got the marks as well. Yes, I think tonight's event was uh, probably the best um, in that way. It was very exciting, and also um, the crowd saw the marks that they wanted to see from the judges. Okay, it was so exciting. Uh, in just a moment, we'll be back to take a look at the singles champions here at the 15th Winter Olympic Games. Not all copiers are created equal, because not all copiers are created by the people who invented plain paper copying, Xerox. Today, Xerox continues to be first choice, because only Xerox continues to create the copiers, small and big, that keep them and you in front. Xerox, the first. Others can only copy. I'm here to tell you that the best brandy you can buy comes from France. But all your Australian brandies have such French-sounding names. How can you tell a real French brandy? First, you choose the one with my name on it. Chatel Napoleon. Very special old pale. Second, nothing tastes as good as Chatel Napoleon. Brandy, Josephine? Only if it's Chatel Napoleon. Life wasn't meant to be a spectator sport. Send your message in a bottle to anywhere in Australia with Interlicker. 
to fly interstate on business? Welcome aboard flight 227. We hope you enjoy flying with us this afternoon. Put it on diners. Nice to have you with us right around Australia on what's been a magnificent evening of figure skating at the Saddle Dome. And uh, I don't know about you two, but I'm still fairly breathless. That was a great, great night. Very exciting. I think probably the most exciting event. I think it was built up around Debbie and Katerina. And what really happened was that the, the people that nobody else were looking at really made the evening better. Yeah, but you were looking manly. at because you, you, you told us before the evening started. And I remember when Jane was saying, but someone else could get... I said, Jane's just being nice. I mean, I'd expect that from Jane, but really, we know that's not going to happen. Not much it didn't. That's right. Liz Manley really came through and, and won that section of the long program tonight. Although she finished second overall, that, this, that part of the program was 50% of the marks, which really bumped her up. And um, Debbie Thomas actually finishing fourth, and Ito um, coming in at third. So, I mean, it really did put the cat amongst the pigeons tonight with those two skaters. Yeah, and we've had two great Sunday evenings of uh, figure skating here on uh, Wide World of Sports. Let's go back to the previous Sunday. The Battle of the Bryans won by Brian Boitano, that fella there. And won decisively too, even though I was quite surprised at the end, he only won by point one. Yeah, I think as, as we said on the day that um, the winner would be, uh, or uh, the anticipated winner was going to be Brian Orser if they both skated well on the night. Certainly anticipated by one judge who still gave him a perfect six. <laughs> well, there you go. But on the night, Brian also didn't skate his best. In terms of sheer quality, I guess this was the skate of the games. Yes. Yes, I think so. It, it combined both things, the technical ability, the athleticism, and the way he performed. Um, it was just what, what people like to see. Interestingly enough, we were speaking with um, the choreographer tonight, um, Sandra Bezik, and once they'd made the decision that he wasn't going to do the quadruple, he started landing them consistently. Um, but they'd already decided definitely they weren't going to include it, but that doesn't stop him from working on it. I think we might, we might see it in the world in um, Hungary in a couple of weeks' time. His style, I think, just got to everybody. Uh, you know, you talk about enjoying yourself out there. There were skaters who were smiling and laughing. I mean, there wasn't too many smiles. It was just a majestic, defiant, dramatic performance. I think that's the word, majestic. He, he sort of, from the previous year, he was still doing some sort of rock, jazz type movement that really wasn't characteristic of what he is. And um, I think he really found a style that suited him. Brian Boitano, as uh, we say, quite dramatic, and uh, he was really uh, flawless in his uh, performance. The winner tonight, Katarina Vitt, who uh, takes away the gold medal yet again, maybe not quite flawless, but nonetheless uh, breathtaking. Yes, yeah, she certainly deserved um, the gold medal for overall performance, both in the compulsory figures, the short program, and tonight in the long program. What I enjoyed about her tonight more so than in Prague, which was only like six weeks ago, that I thought a, a more maturity in her performance of the characterization of the piece that she was doing. Here's um, She was supposed to do a triple loop here. She decided not to do that and do her, her double loop. She had been having some problems, I believe, in practice. So. At that point, she probably thought it was a mistake not to do a triple because Debbie Thomas still had to skate. But fortunately for her, it didn't really matter. And he was a little trip just there. She just came off that edge to do that combination. But because of you know her performance and, and her um, ability, 
she was able to disguise it really quite nicely and make it look still quite a good performer. She was the consistent performer, wasn't she? I mean, she was third in the compulsory. She was uh, she won the short program, second tonight, and the other girls, like the little Japanese girl, they gave away such a big start. They all did their thing, but she did it every time. That's right. Yeah, and that's that's what winning's about in in this sport. It's not just the one event. You've got to be consistent over all the elements. And what's the future, in your opinion, for Katarina? I mean, uh, she will defend the World Championship next month, and then what? Well, it's going to be interesting. There's rumours that she, she wants to become an actress, but I think she will perform in a, in a professional way for, for a short time, I think, um, whether, whether it be in one of the ice shows or just guesting outside of East Germany. Well, she's, uh, as we say in Australia, a great sort, and uh, for the first time since Sonia Henney back in the 30s, she has successfully defended her Olympic gold medal. However, on the night, I felt there were a couple of little girls who uh, maybe just blew the crowd away even more than Katerina. One of them was this little girl, 18 years of age, from Nagoya in Japan, Maduro Ito. Yeah, she just has incredible height on her jumps. And as I was saying earlier, although Artistically, she's not um, that accomplished, but her skating, to see her live, her speed and the flow of the movement that she has when she's actually skating is in itself so enjoyable to watch. So many skaters um, get a bad style and don't really get into the ice when just on their basic stroking, which is just going forwards and backwards. But this little girl um, really gets into the ice and attacks her. Well, she was third tonight. I think she finished fourth in the short program. Uh, the compulsory's let her down. She finished tenth. Uh, is it possible that she can really work on those and get herself up to top three or four? Yes, hopefully next season, next year, she'll, um, she'll certainly know that she has to concentrate on the compulsory figures and, and hopefully she'll, she'll do better. I mean, if she would have been placed higher in the compulsory figures, she'd have been on the podium tonight. Yeah, it would have been interesting to see if, in actual fact, going into this competition, she'd have been able to pull up one or two places more. Um, she could have even edged Debbie Thomas off the podium tonight. Such a difference between uh, her routine, which was so full of vitality and joy, and uh, Katarina's, of course, much more dramatic. But I think the crowd, I mean, they just really appreciated that. Yeah, it was, it was sort of a real true emotion there, isn't it? Really is. Midori Ito, all of 44 kilos, a little girl who uh, had it pretty tough in life. And uh, as we say at the game, some dreams come true, and uh, hers certainly came true here tonight. But I guess of all the dreams that came true, the ones that were so vivid to us all were those of Liz Manley, who uh, really just, yes. you, you predicted that there could have been a fly in the ointment, and uh, that pretty little fly just buzzed in and uh, grabbed the silver medal. Yeah, it was a wonderful evening for her. and. It was so nice to see her to be there when she did this performance. Um, I think the turning point was, you know, when she did her first triple and she landed it so smoothly. Um, it just set her up for the whole program. I was so happy for the Canadians. I mean, they put on these marvelous games. Uh, Brian also got tipped out for what they thought would be a gold medal. Their hockey team hasn't had the best of luck. And then suddenly out comes Elizabeth Manley, hoping for a bronze and grabs the silver. Yeah, yeah that was terrific. Um, last year, Liz Manley was, um, she w had the chance to get on the podium at the World Championships and she'd been terrific in all the practices and uh, she dropped down from, th she was lying third going into the long, dropped down to fifth or something because she gave a bad performance and it was so nice to see her do it here just when it really mattered. Talking to you over the last uh, couple of weeks, two skaters uh, that I've noticed you are particularly happy for, one was Brian Bortano and one was Liz Manley. Why is that? Well, I, I think they've both been in the same situation. You know, they've been capable of it, and they've just missed out. Um, Brian Boitano last year in the World Championship lost his title. And this little girl's always nearly been there, never quite made it. Um, but their skating, their, their quality of skating has been so strong, and that when it does come together on the night, it was, it was so good.
Certainly was, and uh, it's certainly been uh, a great pleasure for me to work with you both. Um, I've enjoyed it immensely. Yeah. Um, we've enjoyed it too. Yeah, we've had a lot of fun, <laughs> and uh, the fun's going to continue uh, down under this year. Well, we hope so. In um, later this year and the end of September, we hope to be coming down to Australia and doing a, a really extensive season around Australia for about six months, um, touring with the Russian team, some that have we've seen at these Olympics and some that we've seen at other Olympics. So we're really looking forward to that. Gee, uh, that will be great because I know you've got millions and millions of fans and uh, you've got some new routines. Um, it's all going to be a lot of new pieces totally in there. Totally new show. Yeah. Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers? You, you, might, see, you, might, see you might see a bit of that. <laughs> caricatures, who knows. All right. And then uh, a much bigger announcement than that, at the Adelaide Grand Prix, we may, <laughs> see, we may see you behind the wheel. Is that right? Well, not on the actual Grand Prix. <laughs> Maybe one of those pre-races. Yeah, the gauntlet's been thrown down by um, Warren Jones from Australia, and so I'll be driving for Great Britain, we hope. Well done. <laughs> All right, well, we'll look forward to that, because uh, talking to you and getting to know you a bit better, uh, I didn't realise that uh, he's a wild speed man. I'll be shopping for Great Britain. At <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a lot of competition down there, isn't there? Sure. All right. <laughs> All right, uh, thanks again on behalf of everybody who watched and enjoyed your commentaries, and we'll see you uh, down under. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Jane Torvald and Christopher Dean, I hope you're enjoying uh, this Sunday night right around Australia. Don't go away because we've got lots more coming up. An average day for a busy secretary can start well enough. You're sailing along happily when suddenly something goes wrong. And one mishap just leads to another. And another. And another. That's why you need a high-performing brother typewriter to make your working day easier and faster. After all, brother's the only typewriter good enough to make the Olympics. The Captain Snooze biggest ever bedding sale is on now. You'll see the biggest ever reductions on water beds and bed settees. The biggest ever reductions on brass beds, inner springs, bedroom furniture and linen. And you'll get the biggest ever bonus because Captain Snooze are giving away a free woolen under blanket with every bed sold. Whoopee doo. The Captain Snooze biggest ever bedding sale. It's on now but only until Saturday. Would all the kids in Australia who vote tip-top multi-green number one move to this side? Everyone's voting for the only multi-green with tip-top great white bread taste that kids love. And three softened greens for extra goodness and fibre. Everybody stop. Everybody step back to balance up Australia again. Tip-top's the one. Good on your mum. If you need a loan for something, just think, would you lend yourself money? You have a steady income. Oh, yes. Know how much you spend each month? Oh, yes, 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 yes. And does that leave enough for the loan repayment? If your answer is yes, um, Westpac's probably will be too, because we're lending larger amounts and giving you more ways to repay. Yes! So, stop talking to yourself. And talk to Westpac. Strongbow, alcoholic cider. It's the greatest state of origin clash in the history of football. And where are you going to see all the action? Nine. Nowhere else. And you reckon these blokes aren't fair dinkum? South Australia, you're the reigning champions. You Western Australians are pretty cocky. You South Wales, you look a good team to me. Victoria, you're the team they love to be. Wednesday night, the action starts on nine when Victoria clash with Western Australia. What odds the Vicks, eh, Simon?
Welcome back, and out we go now to Calgary's Olympic Oval, the first indoor speed skating venue in Olympic history. And boy, hasn't that made a difference to performances. In the eight speed skating races so far, no fewer than five world records have been smashed. Could it be number six tonight? It's the women's 1500 metres. And coming onto the ice, one of the all-time greats, East Germany's Karen Kanya, veteran now of three Olympic Games and holder of the world and Olympic records over this distance. Your commentator, Ron Pickering. Here's the great Karen Kanya. What a reception she gets every time she's on ice. I think I once said she's 5'9". In fact, she's 5'11". And when you stand next to her on ice skate, she dwarfs you. And uh, she is now skating for her eighth Olympic medal, making her the greatest woman skater in history. Although Skobla Kobra, of course, of the Soviet Union, did get six golds. But Karen Kanya, at 27, from Dresden, Hooray. retires at the end of this magnificent season against Marie Stam from Holland, a 23-year-old who was ninth in the European All-Arounds in January. So in saying that, I'm telling you that she's going to be left in the wake of Kania, who knows exactly what she's got to do. The East German Erik has set the standard. La Puga of the Soviet Union, Hashimoto, have skated well as well. She got very tired in the 3,000 metres, but look at the drive this tremendous skater has. The long push, it will be astonishing if she doesn't get a medal in this. It was astonishing she didn't win the 1,000 metres. She hasn't lost one for two years. She's on fast time, but remember, she can keep this form going longer than most. She really does pace herself superbly. Holds the world record at uh, 159.30. That was set at Hirenveen in March last year. She knows here the conditions are better. She's inside, 56.95, inside Eric Stein. I don't think she'll collapse over the last 400 metres. Little bit of skating history here with Karen Kania, who we saw skate as Karen Enka when she won uh, in Sarajevo, a silver at 500, a gold at 1,000, and a gold at this distance, plus a silver at 3,000. So she's going in a superb effort to retain her gold medal and still skating tremendously she's driving very very hard against that's 128.81 she's got it just a hundredth to find and I think she can find it she's paced herself unless that 3,000 meter race took more out of her than anyone suspects she hadn't been on the ice for two days afterwards but this is Karen Kanya and I think she senses that there's a goal, and what a marvellous end to her career it would make. As she comes up now chasing. 201.49, look at it, it's there. 2.00.82, she hasn't broken her old world record, but...